Clyde Tombo first discovered Pluto in 1930. He saw only a single speck of light moving slowly in front of the background stars as he flipped photographic plates back and forth. Sadly, this was the best anyone could do for decades. Even the mighty Hubble, the most sensitive instrument ever focused on Pluto, could only resolve a few grainy pixels. It's because Pluto is really, really far away. 7.5 billion kilometers. Just the light alone from there takes over four hours to reach us. So in order to get any more information, humanity needed to reach out and send a spacecraft to Pluto and photograph it, up close and personal. In 1989, Alan Stern and a group of planetary scientists began working on a mission. Their work culminated in NASA's New Horizons spacecraft, launched in 2006, beginning a nine and a half year journey. And unless you've been living in a lunar lava tube, you know that New Horizons finally reached its destination in mid-July 2015, passing a narrow 12,472 kilometers above the surface. For the first time in human history, we saw a member of the Kuiper Belt right up in its business. And now I retire these old low quality images, Pluto, be gone artist illustrations. From here on out, we're all about sick high def photos of the surface and its moons. I, for one, am going to revel in them for a while. So fashion shoots aside, what did we actually learn about Pluto? The primary mission was to map the geography of Pluto and its biggest moon, Charon. It would study the surface chemistry of those icy worlds and measure their atmospheres, if they even exist at all. The mission had a few other objectives, and of course, planetary scientists knew that the spacecraft would just surprise us with stuff we never expected. Kuiper Belt objects like Pluto and Charon are ancient. Geologists expected them to be pockmarked with craters, large and small. Surprisingly, New Horizons showed relatively smooth surfaces on both worlds. Pluto has a Texas-sized region, newly named Sputnik Planum, where exotic ices flow like glaciers. Frozen nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and methane ices act just like the ones we have here on Earth. And we can see from the relative lack of craters that this process is still happening. And Pluto has mountains, mountains. Close-ups show a young range with peaks as high as 11,000 feet or 3,500 meters. Here's the crazy part. These exotic chemicals that act like snow and ice, they're not hard enough to make mountain peaks like this. At extreme cold temperatures, water ice becomes as hard as rock. These mountains are made of ice, and they're very likely young probably less than 100 million years old. There could be plate tectonics on Pluto, but with ice, not rock. My mind is blown. Pluto's moon Charon has a huge chasm longer and deeper than the Grand Canyon. And although scientists hoped to see an atmosphere, the reality was beyond anyone's expectations. New Horizons detected a thin nitrogen atmosphere at Pluto. Could be snowing nitrogen on Pluto right now. There could be faint winds, since there are regions on Pluto that look like they might have undergone weathering. And take a look at this photograph as New Horizons zipped away, and you can see the atmosphere clearly surrounding the dwarf planet. Interacting with the solar wind it creates a tail that stretches away from the sun. And here's my favorite thing we learned. Pluto is about 80 kilometers larger than previous estimates which makes it the largest Kuiper Belt object found so far, even bigger than Eris, which is still a little more massive. So maybe it's time to revisit that Pluto planethood debate again. Now I'm just messing with you. No good will ever come from having that debate. It will only end in tears. Interestingly, the data connection between Earth and New Horizons is tenuous, possibly the worst internet since AOL. It can only transmit back about one kilobyte of data per second, which means that we'll need to wait about 16 months for the photographs and data to be sent home during the first few days of the flyby. As an extra bonus, this isn't the last we're going to hear from New Horizons. 
because it's so far away, as the spacecraft can only trickle data back to Earth, it's going to take almost two years for all the images and measurements gathered during its flyby to get back to Earth for scientists to study. Expect many more discoveries and announcements over the coming years and more videos from us. Now that Pluto has finally been explored, where do you think we should go next in the solar system? Tell us in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. Our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen. We'd like to thank Elizabeth Babb, Paul Mallet, and the rest of the members who support us in making great space and astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. Want to get on the action? Click here. Say. When? Say when. When? Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Action. I actually can't yeah. say the word W now without saying that. Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Wikipedia. But I say it on everything. Wikipedia. Wikipedia.